All right. Mm, check, check. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this place. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get busy. All right, all right. Come on in. Get on in. Get on in. Get on in. All right, we got a good one today. Um, you know, I think, uh, let's see here. Let me get my music. All right. Oh, they can't hear my music anyway. So, all right, y'all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello, Elizabeth. Good morning from Kenya, Africa in the building. All right. Thank you for joining me tonight, y'all. Um, hey, listen, if you're looking at me tonight, we got a special session tonight, y'all, a special session. Um, I've got a guest, so I want y'all to get on in, and uh, and we're going to really delve into um, – we're going to delve into uh, attachment theory. Hey, Kimberly, how are you? Thank you for joining me. First, I was Samantha from Holland. Welcome. Hey, now somebody, it says Facebook user. Somebody said, hey, my fave, I can't see your name. So would you tell me who you are? I appreciate you. I know obviously somebody I know, but Facebook doesn't tell me your name. It just says Facebook user when you use StreamYard like I'm doing. And so tonight, uh, I just want to know who it is. So y'all, oh, hey, Coach Toy, what's up? How are you, hon? Good to see you. All right, y'all. Tiffany. All right, y'all, before we get started, hey, Tiff, uh, you still at work? You're going to need to hear this session right here. Um, and uh, But let me say this to y'all. Um, before we go on, I have a guest tonight. I um, I want to introduce my guest. She did a session for us last week, and it was amazing. And so she's gonna she's back at it tonight. And uh, and uh, for those of you who don't know why you do what you do, sometimes you ever notice how when somebody doesn't call you fifteen minutes, they tell you they're gonna call you, right? And then they don't call. 15 minutes goes by, 30 minutes goes by, and you start getting anxious. You start wondering, what, what are they doing? What, what, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Well, the, a lot of that has to do with your attachment style. And so tonight, my guest is an expert at attachment theory, a.k.a. attachment styles. Um and look, y'all, she's been helping people in personal development. She owns a company called Severe, uh, Securely Loved. Um, and uh, she's just just dope all around. I, I don't want to. She's got a master's degree and she's just smart. She's just smart like the doctor. OK. And so if you all have any questions tonight after she begins, I want you to type your questions in. Matter of fact, if you want to come on. I can provide you with the link to get on because it's just one platform tonight. Um, I can provide you with the, the link. And you know what? You can just jump on and ask your question yourself. But now if you want to just type it in, I'll be more than happy to relay the message. But guys, I want you guys to give a warm welcome to Bev Middleman. Um, she is the owner of Securely Loved. Let me bring her on. Hey, Bev. Hey, Bev. Oh, let me. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Boom. What's up, Bev? Hi, Ken. Nice to see you again. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Bev. All right. So I didn't go through the long formal introduction because we like friends now. Right. But I just got to tell them you are you are smart and you are dope and you are easy to talk to. Thank That's you. All you need to know. And she knows about attachment styles. And so she's going to educate a lot of you tonight, I wanted to do this interview because we did it. We did one last week on Instagram and so many people were like, I needed that. Help me with more of this. And so she's back for another episode of Understanding Attachment Styles. 
Welcome, Bev. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. And thank you for the kind words. I, I'm excited to be here. I love talking about attachment styles and I'm excited that your audience wants to hear about this. Absolutely. So, Bev, tell us, uh, let's start at the beginning. Let's tell us, first of all, what attachment styles are. What, it, what is it? People hear it. They don't know. And then, you know, how a lot of people regurgitate information, especially the one when they say he's a narcissist or she's a narcissist and they don't have a clue. They heard somebody say it on the Internet and and they don't even know what narciss true narcissism is. But so I want you to educate them on what true attachment theory is, a.k.a. attachment styles. Sure, uh, I'd love to. So uh, we'll start off by saying that attachment theory, uh, attachment styles, this is learned behavior. So I wanna be really clear that this has nothing to do with mental illness or mental disease we all have an attachment style. And it's a set of patterning that we have actually acquired very early on in our lives vis-a-vis -vis the relationship that we had with our caregivers. So in a, in a nutshell, mm -hmm. if our caregivers were highly attuned to us, they, for the most part, consistently met our needs. So if we cried as a baby and we were fed, we were held, we were interacted with, um, generally, that results in a child that feels comfortable and secure about themselves and about others. Mm. So that's what we call a secure attachment style. So, you know, it's hard to identify exact numbers, but it's been estimated that about half of our population in North America, so 50% of folks have that type of um, attachment style, and they tend to do very well in relationships, right? So um, they tend to be open and receptive uh, and communicate in a productive way, for example, uh, have a healthy relationship to boundaries and all that good stuff. Where we end up spending a lot of time is talking about the other 50% of the population. <laughs> the, other, the other 50, yeah. Right. Let's talk about the other 50. Right. So the other 50 is a little more complex, right? So the other 50 is what we generally categorize the insecure attachment styles. And those that are in the insecure, they can be subcategorized into three different styles, right? So it's a continuum. So on one end of things, we have the anxious, preoccupied person. Okay. On the other end, we have the dismissive, avoidant person. Okay. And somewhere in the middle... You know, with some of the traits of both of those folks, we have the fearful avoidance, which is the most complex and um, the rarest type of attachment style. Okay. So to understand this is attachment styles develop again based on primarily our early years and the interaction that we had with our caregivers. So if caregivers, a.k.a. parents, um, people who are around us a lot, right? A hundred percent. That's okay. it. Yeah. So, okay. What or, if it was a grandmother or somebody, whoever spent the most time with us, would they yeah. be considered the caregiver? That's a great question. So generally, uh, an infant, a toddler will identify a primary caregiver or one or two primary caregivers. Those folks have the biggest impact. Okay. So it doesn't matter if it's an aunt or a grandmother or what. It's, it's that primary person. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. And so I want I want to recap. So you said there are primarily four attachment styles. There's the secure attachment style, person who is pretty balanced. Um, they were cared for. Then you have the anxious attachment style, anxious preoccupied. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we have the avoidant dismissive. Okay. Uh, dismissive avoidant. But yes, you're right. On uh, dismissive avoidant. Yeah. And then we have the fearful. Avoid it. That's right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, you're doing great. Now, listen, to complicate things, sometimes we give these terms different names too, right? So the fearful avoidance sometimes in literature is called the disorganized attachment style. I've seen that. When I did my right. study on attachment styles, not nearly as much as you, um, but I was like, disorganized, is that the same? They confused me. I, I'm listen. I'm confused too. I don't know why we need several terms for the same thing. But for the purpose of today's discussion, it's the same thing. Okay. And so you you enlightened me last week and helped me um, 
help me where I had the questions. Okay, so we've got these four different attachment styles. And we also know that this comes from uh, when we were young, our primary caregiver. It was the way we perceived their love or their connection with us. Yeah. So when we're born, it's like a blank slate, right? So we tend to, we, we learn from those that are closest to us and we develop this set of patterns and it's essentially a set of patterns for how we're going to give and receive love. Right. So and this is, uh, you know, I, I want to be clear, too. This is not about blaming or shaming caregivers or right. parents, because I do believe for the most part, people do the best they can with the information they have. Not everyone. Right. But but certainly most parents do. So when we talk about um, that, these attachment styles can form, there's so many different variances. So if a caregiver, for example, is misattuned to us or they're highly critical or they're neglectful or they have to leave for a period of time for work, a child might interpret that as being abandoned because the child is so young, they don't know how to make sense of this. Mm -hmm. um, there are, of course, more complex cases where there's abuse involved. And so that, of course, comes into play as well. You know, there are some cases that are, um, children experience a lot of inconsistency. Uh, and we see this a lot when, for as one example, there's addiction involved. So, for example, if a caregiver uh, is an alcoholic, one day um, the parent might be very loving if if they're uh, inebriated and and they're feeling very loving. The next day they might be in withdrawal and and not be kind to the individual. Um, the next day they might be passed out and the child doesn't know what to do. So it's a level of inconsistency. Mm. And so what the child learns is that I can't trust this person to take care of my needs. And so there are patterns that develop depending on what they experienced, what they heard, what they saw, what they felt. So, you know, some, and they, these patterns follow us into adulthood. And, wow. and they're at the subconscious level, which is super interesting because again, the subconscious is beneath the the conscious awareness so most yeah. people aren't aware of this right we all like to think that we have free agency and we act you know i'm going to do what it is i want to do but most people don't realize that what they're actually doing is playing out patterns that have been already etched into their subconscious years ago and they replay these patterns over and over and over like have you ever heard someone say to you i don't know i just keep picking the same type of yeah I, I get that like on a regular basis. Right. Okay. And, and they're like baffled. They're like, I don't understand. It's because they have a patterning in their subconscious. They uh, keep going back to what's familiar to them. Interesting. Somebody's got a question before we go on. Someone says, um, attachment styles, do they come only from childhood or can it be from previous partners? Excellent question. Um, thank you for asking that. So they are primarily etched in uh, our younger years because in those years um, we're really susceptible. Like we're, um, that's the time that we can have the biggest imprint. Now, as we go through life, we all know that we face traumatic experiences, right? Mm -hmm. We all do on different levels. So that certainly can impact us. Um, in the, along the same vein, we can also heal our attachment styles. Ah, that's good to know. Wow. Yes, as we become as we become aware of this, we can also heal our attachment styles. So it's like two sides of the same coin. As we go, as we come into adulthood and we develop further awareness, and also as we live life and live different traumas, that can impact us absolutely. But you're saying to answer her question, it's probably, yes, the um, previous partners can influence it. Now, here's my question. So let's say you had an insecure attachment style. Parents were there. Parents did what they have to do. But then you get in relationships where people abandon you in the relationship. OK, because, you know, I, I, they, they abandon you. What I mean is they do things. And, and then you begin to think you had the secure attachment style, but your programming of late has been people going to leave me. 
Is that possible? A hundred percent it is. So that's part of, you know, a, a traumatic event that we would, we would talk about. So you can absolutely, as you go through life, develop more or different core wounds. So if you've never experienced abandonment before, and all of a sudden mm. you experience abandonment, that could very much, depending on the emotional impact it had on you, um, and the pain that you suffered as a result of that, it can become one of your core wounds and it can affect your behavior, your emotional patterns and so forth. So the reason that we talk about attachment styles is because um, it, it's so it's it there are distinct patterns that emerge out of each one of these groups. And those distinct patterns have to do with the core wounds that we carry around. So that has to do with our limiting beliefs. Uh, and we all have core wounds that we carry around. Uh, our needs, our emotional patterns, our relationship to boundaries, <clears throat> our communication style, and also, interestingly enough, our behavior and coping mechanisms. So if you observe someone and how they cope in a moment of conflict, it's actually easy to see sort of where they're falling in terms of attachment styles. That's how unique these patterns are. So once you can identify your own attachment style, and by the way, for those who are interested in learning about themselves, um, you can go to my website. There's a link there for a free quiz. It'll ask you a series of questions uh, and you can determine your own uh, attachment style if this is of interest to you. Uh, my website is securelyloved.com. I'm, I'm going to type that in and I got to tell you something. <laughs> yeah. I got I got to tell you something just so that, that we're... Uh clear hold on okay okay because I, I took the test you took the can you uh, took the test oh on, on, your, on, on your website i okay. took it okay I, I took it i'm trying to create now hold on <laughs> i'm trying to create me, me a banner so that we can we can see so people could get your website so no, okay, I that. Here, here it is i got it yeah, look, yeah, I'm, I'm not great with technology, but you know what? This is so important because some of you, number one, need to take the test. Um, number two, all right, so boom, there we go. Thank you. That's See how that is? There we go. Securelyloved.com, right? Thank you. And, you and what a great now. surprise that you have taken the test now. I, I I would love for you to share the results, but only if you're comfortable. Of course. I am. I, mine was mostly secure, securely. Um, do you know I had zero percent of of the the most complex one? The um, this avoided. I, I didn't have. I had zero percent of that. Okay. You, you know, but but I'm, I'm going to find it because I took a picture. So did you? Would not say, Ken? Did you really take the test? I'm going to find the picture of it. No, I believe you, but it's such a nice surprise because I didn't know you did this. Okay, so you have 0% mostly secure. Mostly um, secure. And did, did something come up? As Here it is. Here it is. I don't know if you can see it. You I can maybe, maybe you can't see Ah, darn. Hold on. Maybe you can't see it. But <laughs> uh, you see, I took it though. Okay. So mine said secure attachment 78%. Oh. Uh, Dismissive, avoided, eleven percent. Okay. And anxious, preoccupied, eleven <laughs> percent. That's an interesting result. Okay. Yeah, and then fearful, avoided, zero. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, so, um, so what I've shared so far about how these attachment styles develop. Let's use you as an example. Would you say that that's pretty accurate? That you yes. know the type of relationship you had with your parents would have yes. developed you. Okay, I, I would say it's dead on. I, I would say it's 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 dead on. Yeah. So yeah. folks who are secure, they have a a good level of self confidence, and they have a good view of others. Yes. They feel comfortable in the world. They feel safe. So one of the core wounds, and we, we talked about how there's patterns in each one of the um, attachment styles. The only core wound that is unique to each one of the insecure attachment styles, so the, the anxious preoccupied, the dismissive avoidant, the fearful avoidant, the only one that is unique, and we talked about it last week. Do you remember which core wound that was, Ken? Trust. 
close. It was so. I remember we went over there and you said at the end of the day, I, I, I'm just remembering at the end of the day that all of them is a factor of, can I trust you? That was the thing that stuck in my head. Yeah. But, but, but enlighten me again. So you're, you're right. You're right on the money. So the core wound is, is um, I feel unsafe. Okay. Unsafe. Yeah, which is polar opposite to those that have secure attachment. They feel safe in the world. They feel safe in themselves and the relationship that they have with others. Hmm. Okay. So in this feeling unsafe, in this, you know, connections and these patterns that got ingrained really early on, um, again, it, it was a set of rules, unwritten rules, patterns for how to give and receive love. Uh, and what comes of that is some real distinct behaviors. Uh, again, emotional patterns, relationship to boundaries, communication styles, core wounds and needs. So, and, and this, is, this is really important because this is what we bring of ourselves into relationships with other people. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Attachment styles is very often talked about in in the context of romantic relationships. Yes, they do. They are. They are. Do you, do you know why that is? Please tell me. So romantic relationships are what mirrors the closest relationship that we once had with our caregiver. So mm. the so what it means is, is that uh, our partner is generally the person who is closest to us that we are relying on, that we afford the greatest amount of trust, um, that, you know, so, so those expectations are mirrored for the relationship that we would have once had with a caregiver. So mm. that's why they show up strongest when we're talking about romantic relationships. That doesn't mean that they don't show up, um, these patterns and these communication styles in other relationships. So your attachment style impacts you in every relationship that you have. So relationships that you have to family members. Really? Oh, for sure. Uh, wow. Relationships that you have with friends, relationships that you have with coworkers. With Why? Friends. Yes, but they show up strongest and most intensely in the romantic context. So like you got a friend that's real clingy. You didn't invite me. Why didn't you invite it? Why didn't you invite me? I wanted to go. Oh, I mean, do you, do you see what I'm saying? I, I mean, just so that might be that. Is that the anxious, preoccupied one? Oh, God. yeah, yeah. And it, listen, I'm laughing because you know it. it it's it, the example was funny in itself, but the core wound of the anxious, preoccupied is is um, I am excluded. So that hurts them very deeply. So let's oh. let's talk about core wounds of okay. each attachment style, because I want people to know why they're doing what they're doing, why the behavior is what it is. So if we talk about the anxious preoccupied and that core wound, you talk about core wounds. These are the things that drive us to do what it is we're doing, exhibit the behavior. Right. So yeah. what would be the core wound for the anxious preoccupied? Yeah, I really liked how you phrased that too. It's the underpinning right. for why it is we would do things. So there are there are several, but the big one for the anxious preoccupied is I will be abandoned. Oh wow. So okay. yeah, these are folks who would have experienced some level of potentially real or perceived abandonment in their childhood. And this really put a patterning on them. So for example, a young child who, um, again, I, I think I used this example, whose mother had to travel for work and would go away often. And the child was dropped off at the grandmother's house, for example. The, the child is, is, is far from being neglected, but in the child's mind, they don't understand why the parent keeps leaving. They're too young to understand, right? So we internalize there was there must be something wrong with me. Right. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow, I know. that's deep. Yeah, it, it really is deep. And once you understand this stuff, you start to develop such a level of empathy for folks who 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 feel this, because it really is like it, depending on where you fall on the scale, the feelings can feel really, really big. 
really big. So some of the other core wounds associated to the anxious preoccupied is I will be alone. Mm. So, so when I say that one of their emotional patterns that they experience most frequently is loneliness and sadness. So you can make the connection, right? Wow. So these, these folks are people, for example, who have not developed strong skills to self-soothe to self-soothe, right? So when they're feeling emotional, they have to be around other people. They rely on other people for this. Um, wow. Another core wound for the anxious preoccupied, I'm not good enough. I'll be mm. rejected. I'll be excluded. I'll be disliked. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. These are tough ones. Those are tough ones. Those are tough ones. So that causes them to clink. It causes them to cling. It causes them to um, to move really quickly in relationships. A lot of the times, like I have a friend of mine who uh, is a relatively new friend. We've been friend a couple of months, and uh, she told me after, like I think we went for lunch a couple of times or coffee, and and she um, very shortly after said, "You know, I love you." <laughs> and I did my seen her three times. And, but they move so fast in all relationships because <laughs> they want that connection. Right, so right. When you talk about human needs, uh, emotional connection and love is, mm -hmm. is top priority for them. Oh, top priority. So, so, but before we go on, if any one of you wants to go to Bev's website and, 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 and it can help you. I want to help promote that. So what I want you to do is go to securelyloved.com and how can they book a session with you? I know it's free. I know you have a free session where they can book and, and hold on, I wanna put my banner up again. <laughs> Thank right. you, man. Boom! Awesome, you're the best. Right. So, so yes, I do have um, a free, 20 minute consultation session. It's right on the website. You just book right in, you pick your time. So we can speak one on one and see if working together makes sense, depending on your needs. Um, I also have a free e guide that I give away mm. secrets to the different attachment styles that sort of reviews a lot of what I'm talking about here and more. Um, you can link to that from my Instagram page. Um, you'll see it in the in the highlights section, the free e so, so are you at Securely Loved on Instagram? On Instagram, I'm at securely underscore well, loved. Maybe I'm going to create another banner. Oh, thank <laughs> at, you. At securely underscore loved. Securely. <laughs> okay. Underscore love on IG. Yeah. So, the, you know, the, the ebook is there to read through it and to gain a better understanding. And then the free session. Thank you, Ken. That's awesome. Uh, the free session, again, is, you know, let, let's meet and talk about if it makes sense to work together, depending on what it is you, your goals are and so forth. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm just excited that people are talking about this stuff because um, I, I think it's truly impactful. Um, it really and, is. It's yeah. amazing. All Thanks. right. All right. So let's go into the core wounds of the avoided dismissive person. <laughs> okay. So remember, we're talking about opposite ends of the spectrum, right? right? So it doesn't mean that everyone who's dismissive avoided will have the exact same core wounds, but these are the common ones that we see. So the top one is I am defective. Something's really? wrong with me. There's a shame wound. It's a shame wound. So what's interesting is, is that uh, folks will often comment to me that dismissive avoidance, um, if they have a partner that's dismiss dismissive avoidance or a friend, they'll, they'll interpret that as this person is secretive or they're not really transparent. They're not it's because they don't want you to get too close. They have a core wound that something is defective about them. They're carrying shame and they have this fear. And if you get too close, you'll also realize that something is defective with them. Oh, wow. One of my students just sent me this. She took the test. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So let me give you her results. Okay. 36% securely attached. Okay. 9% dismissive avoidant. Okay. 18% 
anxious, preoccupied, mm -hmm. and 36% fearful avoidant. Okay. That's, what, so what does that mean? That's super interesting. So again, we talked about that it's on a it's on a continuum, right? Okay. So this person is straddling right between fearful avoidant and secure. Um, so I, I would say that there's probably some interesting patterns. They probably do have moments where they um, really do crave um connection with individuals but they can be very standoffish as well they might be a little bit fearful of intimacy they might have trouble trusting other people um you know it's not the person and again we can ask this person individually but this would not be the person who says i love you after a second date they're going to take some oh no she i can tell you that now i know her she ain't okay. telling you i love you after a second date that would be a that would be a hell no right um but but you see, so so that's why there's patterns I, I don't know this person right but just giving where she falls on the spectrum um she would need a little bit more time to establish trust oh yeah i can see that mm -hmm. I, can, I, I i can see that i can see yeah that, that, that makes yeah. sense okay Oh, that's right. great. So if more folks, if you if you've actually taken the test, let us know and we'll we'll sort of give you a rundown of what that means. Yeah, this is cool. This is cool. So <laughs> when the the avoided uh, dismissive person, the wound is um, that I'm defective. So that's that the top something. wound. OK, that's the top wound. Um, and it's, it's associated with shame. It's associated with shame. Yeah. A lot of times uh, these are folks who, uh, as children, young children, had very critical parents. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, they were critical. And so um, these uh, they learned that they couldn't rely on their parents. So if they had a problem, they would hide it. They wouldn't tell them and they became overly self-reliant. So it's like I can't trust you to meet my needs because you know what you're going to shame me you're going to you're going to be critical of me you're going to whatever it is uh and so i'll just take care of it myself and and pretend that the problem isn't happening so some of the other dismissive avoidant core wounds um and i think this is going to resonate with your audience because this okay. is what we'll talk about i will be trapped hmm. right so we often yeah. think, yeah, we often see memes and tropes about um, men talking about they're afraid of commitment. And so, you know, we automatically assume that this has to do with the fact that they are dismissive avoidance and we make all sorts of assumptions. Let me tell your audience, by the way, that attachment styles has nothing to do with gender. Nothing to do with gender. Nothing. Yeah. No. So, you know, we see like the, the most common trope that we see or meme on Instagram is the anxious, preoccupied woman chasing after the dismissive avoidant man. And he's pulling away and she's running after and yeah. it's comical to some degree. Um, but it, there's, there's, it's not gender specific right, at all. Right. Somebody here, I think it's Jacia says securely attachment, 43%. She's got fearful avoidant and dismissive avoidant, 21% and anxious, preoccupied, 14%. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm looking. I, I actually can see this here. So oh, you can oh, you can see them. Okay, I can, I can see this. So this was Jaseya. So forty three percent. So pr predominantly secure, leaning a little bit fearful and dismissive. Okay, so this individual uh, generally uh, has, I would say, a um, fairly good uh, framework for relationships, but. Okay. Uh, during periods of stress uh, or conflict can become or need to take space, uh, you know, need time to cool down, can become, uh, a, you know, stonewalling, um, can rely quite a bit on like creature comforts, right? So it's creature like, you be, I just see it, you be stonewalling. <laughs> so if some if someone comes at you hard and they're like, "Listen, we need to talk about this now," you might you might need to say to them, "I I need to cool down. I need to take some space." Okay, right. <laughs> she, she, she's laughing. Yeah. Right. All right. So okay, let's see. We got Kimberly Henderson says, 
anxious, preoccupied uh, attachment style. Uh, wait a minute. So, okay, hold on. Okay, no, no. So she's got fearful, avoided, 26%. Anxious, preoccupied, 32%. Dismissive, avoided, 16%. And secure, 26%. So, so what we do is we look at which number is the highest. So again, the fact that these numbers are sort of all over the place really do illustrate the fact that it's a continuum, right? It's like okay. there's very few people who are going to fall squarely in one box is that it really is a continuum. So what we do is we look at, okay, in this case, if we're looking at Kimberly, uh, her highest is, am I reading this right? Her highest is anxious preoccupied at 32%. Yes. That's correct. Followed up by, hold on, I lost that for a moment. The next one is fearful avoidance. Yeah, the, the secure and um, fearful avoidance, same, 26%. Yeah, securely attached. So so this, I, I would focus mostly on the anxious preoccupied because mm -hmm. that would be your predominant style. So yeah, the anxious yeah. preoccupied, again, um, is generally the person who fears abandonment. Um, is generally the person, and again, it, it's so interesting because they fear abandonment, but this is the person that often self-abandons to please someone else. So um, we talked about how there are specific tra trauma responses. We talked about the four Fs in another live. The four Fs, do you remember what those are, Coach? Yes, that's fight. Yeah. Fight. Right. Freeze. Yeah. Or fawning. <laughs> I told you I learned some stuff. I told I told you I learned yeah. some stuff. Wow, you're the best student ever. I mean, I, so that that's what it is. So I bring this up in context of talking about the the anxious preoccupied because the fawning piece is really big. Fawning is people pleasing. So in the mm. face of conflict. Even if someone has a specific need, they might self-abandon their need to please the other person to end the conflict. This is a okay. very, very common strategy of someone who is fearful avoidant. Uh, sorry, of uh, anxious preoccupied. Sorry about that. So I would ask, I would ask Kimberly uh, if if that resonates with her, if she finds that that's something that she is sometimes doing, or if she is feeling anxious when she's um not in proximity to her partner so mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times folks who are anxious preoccupied um they want to text with their partners all day long they want to hear from them 18 times a day they want to see them five nights a week they want like they want to close that gap they really do want to be in close proximity to their partner um because again, they're, it, it gives them certainty around that core wound of abandonment and that emotional issue of feeling lonely. No, I get that. So, yeah. let, so I know we can do this all day because people will do that test. <laughs> Go take the test, securely loved. I don't want to take any more time doing that. But here's what I would like to do. I would like to go back and make sure that these people can understand what the core wounds for are for each style, because that's super important. Because I know we went over the um the anxious preoccupied. And I kind of want to just go through the um, uh, uh, the dismissive avoided and sure. the fearful. And so the people can hear the core wounds with the time that we've got left. I want to make sure they get that. And I want to make sure that they can come book a session with you and they can get all of their questions answered and all of that. But I want to give them that. Sure. Absolutely. Let's do that. So the dismissive avoidance, again, we talked about the defective wound, which is a shame wound. Um, I will be trapped, right? They really, really do uh, value their freedom and autonomy. Okay. These folks are very self-reliant, right? Okay. Um, they are um, not really, uh, they're a core wound of incapable of change, right? They don't really like change. They don't feel that they're capable of change. Um, they feel sometimes that they are not good enough. That could be from the critical parent. Um, I will be helpless or I will be powerless. So these are some really um, interesting um, core wounds, very different from the anxious preoccupied. Mm. Okay. I got it. So let's run through those again. Those, okay. Let's just hit about three or four of them. So if I'm avoided, dismissive, 
I'm probably my core wound. My wound is is um, I'm defective or there's shame in my life. OK, what else? What would be two or three more? Give I'll, me two. I will be trapped. I feel trapped. So I don't want to get too close to you. So I won't feel trapped. OK, go ahead. I don't, I don't want to lose my freedom. Right. So and my autonomy, because the only way I know how to live life is to be overly self-reliant. Good, good. So, okay. You know, don't have expectations that I'm going to meet your needs. I meet my own needs. So you got to do the same. OK. All right. Yeah. And give me two more. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. OK. I'm not good enough. I, and then the one that appears in all three of these insecure, I am unsafe. OK. Wow. I'm not good enough. I'm safe. I'm unsafe. I feel trapped. And there's some shame. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So if you're experiencing any of those things, it could be that. And a lot of times um, we got a comment from Tiffany. Tiffany says, I totally value my autonomy. OK. Um, does that have anything to do with our attachment style? I, I think, you know, that's one of remember we went over the six core needs. Autonomy was one of them. I don't think, remember, we went over uh, those six needs, connection, mm -hmm. autonomy, variety. I mean, variety and autonomy. Um, so, but I don't know if that is that attributed to attachment styles because I like autonomy or is that just a core need of a human being? Yeah. So I'd have to know a little bit more. Okay. Right? Gotcha. Like it, it's very hard to sort of take one trade and go, you are this. Um, so it. because people who are secure also value their autonomy in balance with also connection to others, right? So there's no codependency, there's interdependency where there is a balance. So, so this, this might fall under secure as well. Um, you'll never hear an anxious preoccupied say, I value my autonomy. They don't. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, no I don't. get it. I get it. Okay. Let's stop. Makes... Let's move to the fearful avoidance. Fearful avoidance. Fearful what, avoidance. what are their wounds? They have the most amount of wounds. So again, this is the most complex style. This is the rarest style. And um, it's it's uh, a little bit of anxious preoccupied with a little bit of dismissive avoidant mixed together. So these are the folks that um, often oscillate between being activated and deactivated. So how we see this play out are these are the folks who often say, come close to me, no, go away. No, 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 come close to me. No, 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 go away. So they, 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 they oscillate in their mind between wanting connection and being afraid of intimacy. So are they the kind of person that says something like, hey, don't leave me when I come close. No, 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 get too close now. No, you know, hey, back up. Yeah. But, but wait a minute, you wanted me to come close. Mm -hmm. So they kind of have this push-pull relationship. Yeah, push-pull, hot-cold. Yeah, mm -hmm. these are good terms. Yeah. And they're not trying to be, you know, um, disrespectful of their partners. This is what goes on in their minds. And this this has a lot to do with trust and their core wound of I will be betrayed. Oh, wow. So this is a this is a really tough one. And I think we talked about the origins of this particular one. I mean, there could be several scenarios, but one of the scenarios that I like to talk about is um, imagine that a child a young child is in distress mm -hmm. and they reach out to their caregiver to be soothed because that's what children do. Yes. And the caregiver in response slaps them. Mm. Now the child is caught in this terrible situation where the person that they love and they've reached out to, to soothe their distress has actually caused them pain. And now they want to reach back out to this person to soothe the additional pain, but they're afraid of that person. Mm. So they don't, they don't know what to do. They're like caught, right? This is a young child. They have no one else to reach out to. So um, this is what happens is that there's a patterning whereby um, as you grow into adulthood, it becomes very difficult to trust because as you get closer to someone, you're you're always sort of anticipating that you might get slapped metaphorically, 
but you're waiting for that pain to be inflicted. Mm. So wow, really, that's deep. Yeah, it's really, really hard for um, someone who's fearful avoidant to actually trust. Now, it doesn't mean that we can't yeah. actually work through these wounds, right? Because these limiting beliefs, again, we can work through those at the sub a subconscious level and make a real difference. So I, I want to put that out there that this is, even if you do fall into an insecure type, it's not it's not a life sentence you can learn to reprogram your belief patterns and 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 change you know your behavior as a result i want you to i want you to to delve into that for the few minutes that we've got left sure um that but before before we do that i want i want to go back to the the avoidant fearful that's a that's a deep kind of dichotomy of how things, I'm looking at it, I love this person. I'm supposed to be soothed by this person, but the person gets mad at me and then punishes me. But then I still love them and I want to go back to them, but I don't know if I should because they might hurt me, you know, either emotionally or physically. That is, that is, wow. Wow. Yeah. 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 So, um, and it's, and, and there's a high degree of unpredictability in this scenario too, right? So the child doesn't know what, what mood is the parent in today? Am I going to be loved today? Am I not? Like, so, um, usually this style is, is, uh, heavily linked to children who were abused, right? Mm. Right. Wow. Yeah. It's, okay. um, it's so, one. so Teresa says, I dated someone like this uh, and having abandonment issues. It was an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. Is what she said. Yeah, Teresa, um, it can be. And I think that this is, you know, this is why I do the work that I do because you can reprogram these core wounds. So the individual that you were dating, it would have been up to that person to say, you know what? I don't want to live like this anymore. So the interesting thing is, is that we talk about the impact that it has on the other person. But uh, for most of my life, before I went through the process of healing, I was fearful avoidance. And I can tell you that it doesn't feel good. So you're highly anxious and you're highly avoidant. So um, this is not a comfortable state of being. You're, you're, you're always in what we call parasympathetic nervous system stage. You're always in fight or flight. Uh, and so you're you're always geared up to go. You're never relaxed. You never feel comfortable. You're hyper vigilant. You're you know there's this nervous energy that runs through you because you never feel safe. You don't know who's around you. You don't. And so um, first and foremost, you know to feel better in your own skin in your own mind. That's where we you know I would suggest to go through the process of reprogramming these these core wounds whatever they may be because your nervous system will calm down and then you become you know a better a better partner to someone else now mm. to be on the recipient of dating someone who's you know um, I love you I need space I love you we're moving too fast like I mean that can drive you crazy right 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 it's also very addictive we call that intermittent reinforcement so <laughs> Intermittent reinforcement. Right. What the hell? Go yeah. ahead. That's a new term for me. So it, it's like uh, it's it's all it's the same thing as the addictive nature of gambling. When you go to a casino, yes. you, lose, you lose, you lose, you lose, you win. You lose, you lose, you lose, you win. Oh. So, so it's the same thing where it's like you know your partner is is you know disconnected, unfriendly, unkind, they're loving. So you sort of hold on to those moments. Wow. And so people get That's addicted great. to these patterns. So tell me this. We got we got about we got about 10 minutes left. Here's what I want to know. A person who wants to change, mm. what are the steps? What do I need to do? Because you said it's not a death sentence or a life sentence. No, no, it's you not said, a life sentence. You said I can change, I can reprogram. Yeah. And I know that because I deal with the subconscious mind. I've reprogrammed my own mind. And a lot of people I've coached, I've helped in that process of reprogramming their minds. Um, when we're talking about attachment styles, how do we how do you, how do you go about doing it? Because I know you're the expert at this. 
Right. So um, like the neural pathways in our minds, think of them like highways, right? Mm -hmm. So so they got built over time, but we can build new ones. So mm -hmm. what we do is we actually have a set of uh, very specific exercises and tools that we use to start um, looking at what are those, what's the underpinning of the belief systems that we have. And we all have belief systems, right? It's like the lens by which we see the world. Okay. And so there's exercises where we can start to actually um, unravel some of those belief systems and implement new, better, better serving belief systems. Okay. Um, and it takes a couple of weeks to of re repetitive nature. So the subconscious mind doesn't understand language in the way no. that we understand it. The conscious mind does, but the subconscious mind speaks in terms of imagery, yes. emotion, and repetition. Yep. Yeah. So the habitual every, mind. Yeah. That's so why we do it more. Memory, yeah. Like every memory that we have is like a little container of mm. imagery and emotion. Yes. Yes. So, so we use that knowledge to be able to chisel new pathways into the subconscious. So we use we use imagery, we use emotion, uh, and we create these new neural pathways. And ultimately, the old ones that are no longer serving us, they atrophy over time. Yep. Yep. Re I love the whole idea of reprogramming. Mm -hmm. So, so. All right, so if anybody, listen up. I'm going to put the website, I mean, I'm, I'm going to put her website back up. I, I created a banner. Boom! <laughs> if you want to go, take the test, okay? If you want to reach out to her and get you a session in, it's free. Um, and my, Mine not free, y'all. I'm just, just saying, just so we know. Hers are free. I think you ought to take advantage of it because this kind of information, what she's doing, these days, I mean, wow. For her to be even sitting down and talking to you, that's amazing. She's doing it for our audience. Um, so if you want to know more, you want to take the test, go to the web. I took the test. I took the attachment style test. Um, I think it would be enlightening for you to take it. But you can do all of that at securelyloved.com. Yeah, absolutely. And I would be happy to meet with you one on one again. It's it's a 20 minute consultation just to understand, you know, what your goals are. Um, and I, I work with folks all over the world. So mm. it doesn't matter where you are. Um, if you have an internet connection, everything I do is virtual. So um, thank you for for all your questions and your engagement and for your um, you know excitement with this topic, because yeah, I, I think it's important. Yeah. Um, any last any last thoughts you want to give them before before we check out? Uh, you know, I've read some of the comments here and someone said, right, we are all messed up in some way. Just work on a better you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that that is very true. So uh, we all experience trauma at different levels as we go through life. Uh, and the intent is always to, I think, again, work on yourself so you feel calm, so you understand your mind, so you can attract the partner that you want and you can be the best version of the partner that you could be. It's not about pointing to someone else and identifying their attachment style and this is what you need to work on. It's really all about, you know, healing your own wounds so that you can feel safe and you can feel more secure in the world and in your relationship. So I think that's what the true benefit of this work is. Um, yeah. And I, again, thank you, Ken, for having me on as a guest. No, thank you. Um, she'll be in my Relationship Academy tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So if you're an Academy member at 12 noon, we're going to go into the anxious, preoccupied, and uh, yeah, we're going to go deep into that. All right. Thank you, Bev. I appreciate you so very much. Um, I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot. You're a great I, student. I love, see, I took my test. See, I did my work. <laughs> I, I did love my work. it. 
I did my work. I love it. Yeah, yeah I did my work. All right, y'all. That is it. That is it for me tonight. We appreciate you guys for joining in because you could be anywhere in the world, but you are here tonight with us. And uh, until next time we say, have a good evening. Thank you so much. Good night. All 